Okay, so the homogeneous mixture, the other name is solution. Okay, most of us are popular with or familiar with a liquid solution. Do we have another solution? Yes, we say it's like air. Air, we say it's, it's a mixture of gases. Air is a mixture of gases, right? Air is a mixture of gases. And what kind of mixture? Homogeneous or heterogeneous? No, we said it's also what? Homogeneous. So air is a solution. Why? Because it is a homogeneous mixture. Okay. So air is a solution because it is a homogeneous mixture. And when we come to air, we find it is what? A mixture of gases. So it's what? A gases. A solution can so it's what a solution or a gas solution so air is a gas solution air is a gas solution why we give it this name because solution is the other name for homogeneous mixture okay we understood that air is a mixture for homogeneous mixture but can we give another name for homogeneous mixture yes solution so air is a mixture of gases or we can say air is uh, gas solution. Air is a gas solution. Okay, when we have uh, water, okay, and we dissolve in it uh, sugar or salt, so we have what? A liquid, huh? We have a mixture of water and uh, another substance like solid, like salt or sugar. So what, what we can see, we can see the liquid, right? The form of liquid, the solution in front of the mixture. What is the state of the mixture? The state of the mixture we can see in front of us. We can see the, what is the state. It's a liquid state, so we call it what liquid solution. Okay. So as you see here, as you can see, the table is said state of solution. This state could be solid, could be liquid, could be gas. Right? But what determines the state of the solution? The solvent. Like here, for liquid solution, the solvent is liquid, like water. If you look to soda, soda is a liquid solution. Okay, and if we look in more detail to soda, we found soda that it contains what many different things like gas, carbon dioxide, solid sugar, and flavoring colors. Okay, so but why we did say it is liquid because when we look to that solution, its state is liquid. Okay. When we look to this uh, sign, the, the composition of this sign, of the structure, it is made of gases. It is made of gases. What is inside the tubes? If this is tubes that is, uh, has a lighted, it is lighted. So what is inside this tube? It is what? A mixture of gases. Okay? So we said that the solution is a gas. Okay, could we have solid solution? Yes. Like the saxophone. This saxophone, can you say it is made of what? Someone maybe maybe this color is gold, maybe it is covered. No, I'm telling you, this what is a mixture of two metals, copper and solid. Okay, when you look to this one, so it's a mixture. Can you see the different parts? No, you cannot see the different parts, even we using the microscope. So it's a mixture. It's what? A mixture. But what is the state of this mixture? The state is a solid. Okay. So according to the state of the mixture in front of us, we give it the solution its name. I hope this one is uh, clear. <clears throat> Mazin? Mazin, where is the hand? Yes, teacher, thank you. Okay, the thing is clear now? Yes, thank you. So, Shabab, I consider that we, we revised already what we said uh, yesterday about uh, solution and solution. So, there is only one point we missed here. Just a solution is made of what? Of two parts, which are uh, solvent and solid. Solvent and solid. And the solvent is a substance that exists in the greatest quantity in a solution, like when we have uh, the soda, the water is what? Uh, water is the solvent. Why? Because it exists in the greatest quantity. 
All other substances are solids. In soda, we have uh, carbon dioxide, we have sugar, we have uh, flavoring materials, we have coloring materials. Okay, all of these other materials are what solids. Okay, but what's one the, sol uh, the solvents? The ones that exist in the greatest quantity, like wood. Okay, and so also for air, you can find 78% of nitrogen of the air. So if we call nitrogen what is a solvent, and the other gases are solids. Okay, so it's, we think in science by a different way than normal people. Okay. <clears throat> Today, inshallah, uh, we'll talk about water. What is special about water? How is water is special? Okay. You know water, you can find water in many different states, right? You can you can find water uh, as it is a liquid or a gas, liquid like the water, the normal water we can find. This liquid, or we can have a gas like water vapor. We uh, heat it, or we could have a solid, okay, like what, like ice. So water, uh, one of the uh, materials in our earth that could exist in the three states. We can find water in the form of liquid, in the form of gas, in the form of salt. Okay, this is one of the specialty of water. Uh, number two, water can dissolve many materials, can dissolve many materials or many substances. Okay. Because of, why is this happening? Because water has, we call it what, uh, polarity. So polarity of water, okay, make water that we call universal solvent. Okay. What is the meaning of universal sol solvent? It means it can dissolve many substances. It can dissolve many substances. Okay. So why we call water is universal solvent? Because of its polarity, so it can dissolve many substances. Okay. So water as solvent here. Okay. You can find that uh, all solutes can dissolve in water in water because of its polarity. Okay, this is what some special points about uh, water, water as a solvent. Uh, so guys raising their hands, who has a question, sir? Where raising his hand? Okay. Okay, come to the polarity of water, come to the polarity of water. If we come back uh, to water, we found that Water, uh, the symbol of water is H2O. It means we have two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Okay, so we can draw this like this one. We have oxygen and hydrogen. And there is a bond between oxygen and the hydrogen atom and another bond between oxygen and the hydrogen atom. Okay. This bond, what is its name? Its name is covalent bond. Covalent bond. So this bond that bonds oxygen and hydrogen together, okay, what's its name? Covalent bond. So water as a compound, we call it covalent compound. Okay, so water, huh? what is the uh, bonds inside water, inside water between the atoms, between oxygen atom and hydrogen atom, it is covalent bond. So we call water covalent compound. Okay, what is the special about covalent bonds? In covalent bonds, the atoms share electrons. The atom are sharing what? Sharing electrons, sharing electrons. The atoms what? Share electrons. The atoms share electrons. 
Okay, so this is equivalent bonds, atoms sharing electrons. So, uh, do we have another kind of bonds? You took last year. You took equivalent bond and another bond. Do you know the name of the other bonds? Do you know the other name of the bond, Mazin? Is it teacher ionic bond? Yes, excellent, ionic bond. And the compound that, that is inside ionic bond, we call it what? Ionic compound. Thank you, We call it what? Ionic compound, okay? So in covalent bond, the atoms, like oxygen and the hydrogen, they share electrons. Like when you put your hand in the hand of your friend, what you are doing, you are sharing hands. But your friend will not take your hand and you will not take the hand of your friend, right? So you are sharing your hands. There is a bond you made by uh, hanging uh, each hand in, in, uh, in one another, okay? So this is the meaning of sharing the electrons, okay? If we look to these electrons, we found them near to oxygen. They are near to oxygen more than hydrogen. So this bond, this bond is made of electrons. We have here two electrons. One electron for oxygen, one electron from hydrogen. Also here we have one electron from oxygen, one electron from hydrogen. This electron has negative charge. So, and they are near to oxygen atom. So what will happen to oxygen atom? Oxygen atom will gain a negative charge. And this charge, it's partial. What, yeah, it is not a complete negative charge because they are not uh, totally gained by oxygen, okay? They are just near to oxygen than hydrogen. And because electrons move away from hydrogen, so hydrogen gains partial positive charge. Partial positive charge. This hydrogen now becomes partial positive. This one becomes now partial positive. And oxygen is partial negative. Okay, so this makes what it makes water has two bonds, has two bonds. Water has two bonds. These two bonds are a negative pool and positive pool. Or we can say end, we can replace this one negative end okay and the positive what and the positive end okay so now water has two bones okay or two ends one end is negative and one another end is positive and we know from magnetism that if we have two magnets this magnet has two bones north and south and also this one has two poles north and south if we bring them near to each other, they will repel, right? Because huh, light poles what repel. But if we make them, if we have here north south and here we south north, they will be attracted because different poles what attracted. So what you predict when we put uh, inside water, okay? When we put inside uh, water, another substance to dissolve in water. So now oxygen is negative, and this is hydrogen here, and also this one is hydrogen, and this is oxygen. And so uh, hydrogen becomes partially positive. Hydrogen becomes partially positive, oxygen becomes partially negative. So when we put uh, any other material to dissolve in water, what will happen if the material, other material, has two poles also? Okay, so it has negative end and positive end. And another molecule of the substance has positive and negative end. Okay, who can tell us what will happen to these molecules of other substances. We can call this uh, substance, for example, table salt. If we put table, table salt in water. Okay, table salt is ionic. So it has 
two ions, negative ion and positive ions. Okay. So what will happen to this one? Who can tell us what will happen? Ayman? This is a denominator. Yes, but what happened to the positive uh, and the negative from the table salt? They will attract it to what end of water? I don't know. Okay, look here. Here we have positive and negative. And here also we have negative and positive. So it's like magnets. Okay, thanks, I imagine. Teacher, <clears throat> I think they will uh, be attracted to oxygen because it is the, big, the biggest one, I think. Yes, the negative one, the negative, sorry, sorry. Not the, the negative one will be attracted to the, uh, the, the hydrogen because it is positive. So negative is attracted to positive, and the positive one will be attracted to the negative oxygen. This is how water dissolves table salt. So because table salt is ionic, it means ionic what it has a positive ion and a negative ion. So the positive ion is attracted to oxygen because oxygen is negative, and the negative ion is attracted to hydrogen because hydrogen is positive. Okay, so these four ionic uh, compounds. Okay, we have also another which we call polar com compounds. Polar compound like uh, the alcohol. Like the alcohol. Rubbing alcohol we use for uh, for now to protect us from coronavirus as a disinfectant. Okay. Uh, so uh, also alcohol has two ends. We can so we can say also it has two ends. Okay, positive end and negative end. In your book, you draw alcohol like this one. Alcohol it's symbol C two H five O H. So in your book, so we have two carbon and we have six hydrogen. Okay, so we have two carbon when we have three hydrogen. Here also we have hydrogen. Uh, here we have hydrogen. Here we have hydrogen, okay? And here also we have what? We have here uh, one hydrogen, okay? And one orange. Okay, so we have also the same things. We have positive and negative, okay? Positive, this one is positive, this one is positive. So we have also, it is what we call it what? Polar. We call it what? Polar compound, okay? So the same thing, the negative end the negative end of the alcohol will be attracted to hydrogen end because they have opposite charge. Negative will attract it to positive. And the negative one will be, at, sorry, the negative, as we said, will attract it to the positive, and the positive will attract it to the uh, negative. Okay? So this is how water dissolve other substances. Even they are ionic or polar. Polar means they have also uh, negative and positive. Ionic means has also negative and positive okay so this is what's special about water okay so if we come here in your book can you see here the oxygen this is the oxygen it has a negative charge and both hydrogen and this hydrogen has positive what the charge so we can say two ends two ends so if we dissolve another material hydrogen is positive so the negative will be attracted to hydrogen and the positive will be attracted to oxygen. Okay. So now this is what's special about water. Okay, I want someone to read this. Thanks, Alan. So now we'll talk about the polarity of water. The polarity of water. Why water is polar? Who can read this one? Amazing. He said here, a polar molecule is a molecule with a slightly negative end and a slightly positive end. Yeah. Come for read non-polar molecules. Non-polar, they don't have negative or positive ends. Have an even distribution. It means an equal, equal distribution. Equal distribution. And for example, when we look to H2, the hydrogen gas, it is made of two hydrogen, H and H. And so we have here a bond, it's also covalent bond, we have one electron from hydrogen, one electron from the other atom. So these uh, bonds or these electrons are even as an even distribution. They are equally distributed between the two atoms. So 
no one of them has negative or positive charge. Okay, no one of them has negative or positive charge. So we call it what? Non-polar. Non-polar. Because these electrons are equally distributed between the two atoms. Okay? Come to solids. Set solids can be polar or non-polar. Okay, but water is what is a polar molecule. Okay, for that. So all of these we explained already. Uh, come to the next page. Uh, like dissolves like. What's the meaning of like dissolves like? Yeah, and water is polar, right? Water is polar. So it will dissolve. Polar, it means what? It has negative end and positive end. So it will dissolve any compound or any molecule that has also negative and positive end. Like what? Like other polar compound. So polar molecule will dissolve polar compound. Or uh, the ionic, as we said for salt. Why ionic? Because also ionic has negative and positive end. Okay, so there's the meaning of like dissolved like. Water is polar, so it has negative and positive. Another polar compound like alcohol, as we said, the alcohol. Okay, it has also, it is polar also has negative and positive ends. Ionic has negative and positive ends. So uh, water can dissolve polar and ionic because of all of them has negative and positive ends. Okay. So water is often called the universal solvent, as we said. We can read this, this uh, sugar. I think we reached the end of our period. Yes, sugar. Which it means it's the time. It's non-polar, which we call like dissolves like. As we said here, water is polar, so it will dissolve polar. Or ionic because both of them has what negative and positive. Okay, uh, and as we said, water is a uh, water cannot dissolve most of uh, water cannot dissolve everything. Okay, or why water dissolves some substance but not other? This is the answer because water is a polar solvent. It dissolves most polar and ionic, uh, polar and ionic here polar and ionic. Okay, and also as we said in the examples. Okay, here in this uh, figure, he illustrated how polar, how water uh, can dissolve what alcohol in this drawing is water molecule and this is alcohol as we said two carbon with three hydrogen here and two hydrogen here as we said. Here. Okay, uh, also here you can find about what we said about the table salt. Table salt, the molecule has one positive and one negative. The hydrogen, because it is negative, it is positive, it will attract it to the negative. The oxygen, it is negative.